disclosure of pecuniary interest um, and the general nature thereof. Anybody have mm. anything to declare? No. And adoption of the previous minutes. Did everybody get them and have a chance to have a look? If so, can I have a motion and a seconder? Danielle motion, Howard second, thank you. Okay, business arising. Um, we are keeping our first three items um, on the agenda and deferring them um, until we uh, have Rachel back essentially, I think, or at least um, are ready to move on that. So the first item of business is the blue plaque update. And uh, we do have uh, one blue plaque uh, application that has come in that Brian and I have both looked at. Uh, we still have some time. We are running this until the end of February. So hopefully we'll uh, have some more come in and we'll also see if we want to reach out to that uh, one or two that are from previous um, uh, application periods. The last one was two years ago. We had one on file from there. So we haven't done that yet, but um, we'll see if we get any more. The one we've received is, uh, is pretty good. So I think that we may be able to present that when the um, application process is closed out. Amber, are you talking about the James Anderson or the blue plaques? Oh, the James Anderson, sorry. Yes, we did just get the one for James Anderson. Yes, I confused them. This is not a good sign. Um, so yes, that was James Anderson. Uh, for the blue plaque update, we had a meeting last night with the blue plaque committee. And um, I think I'll bring this up from the new business, Casey. Um, we talked about some planning for blue plaque, but we also discussed uh, rolling the blue plaque committee into the overall awards committee. So the awards committee is an existing standing mm -hmm. committee for James Anderson. It's been in place for um, the last 15 or 16 years since we've had the James Anderson award. So having two committees seemed um, redundant. So uh, we wanted to put forward um, pulling the subcommittee for blue plaque into the subcommittee and just calling it the awards committee and having a larger group of people handle both of these awards. So I don't believe we need a motion for this, just an agreement within the group, Casey. Yeah. No, we don't need a motion for that. I don't think so, no. So that's what I'd like to do uh, moving forward. And in that case, we will be adding um, four people to the awards committee. The awards committee right now is myself and Brian. So we'll have a much larger group. And as we, you know, if, if anybody has a dissenting vote, let me know. Otherwise we'll go ahead with this plan and we'll disseminate the James Anderson application out to uh, the new members of the awards committee. And then we'll have a follow-up meeting before our next meeting to review James Anderson applications and do some of our preliminary planning for blue plaque and just make it easier. All right. So if there's no other updates for the awards, I have nothing further and we can move on to the 2021 project discussion. And I believe uh, Robin and Roger, you were, um, doing some work around that, our project to, oh, there's Brian, our project to um, work with uh, modern heritage and uh, sort of put together some best practices and communications around that. I did see some emails going back and forth. I don't know if um, you had any updates to that. Um, yeah, there was an email that I sent around uh, it seems like the project has either grown or or always was uh, bigger than I can handle alone. And uh, I was hoping that someone with uh, more experience with delegating and handling uh, 
the multiple part projects might step in to take over that part of it um, because I'm not sure I can handle that myself. I'm happy with the uh, best practices, literature, etc., cetera, but uh, all the rest and, and the, the projects as a whole is a bit bigger than me anyway. So currently, is it just the two of you working on that and you're looking for a third or fourth member to help in the dissemination of tasks or as you say, organizing? Well, I'm not sure that it's, uh, it's an official thing that we're working on exactly so much as uh, the idea is taking some shape and uh, as I see it anyway, uh, needs a competent leader. And Robin, I'm not sure um, from your email, I'm not sure if I am that leader to pull it all together, but I can certainly work with you in the early stages, like more of a think tank to kind of create a structure of what it actually is that we're trying to achieve. That could work for sure. So would it be worth the two of you putting together the structure um, and the pieces that you'd like to think would be part of the project and then being able to bring it to this committee and then we'll see who could also get involved to move it to the next step? Um, does that make sense? Unless somebody thinks they'd like to get involved Um, as I'm no longer the chair, <laughs> I have some time. <laughs> so, Robin, if you send me the email you sent around, I'll take a look at it and we can go from there. Okay, I will do. Perfect. Thank you, Patrick. Uh, I know you're very good at organizing and uh, running these things, so there you go. All right. So I will leave it to the, we, I guess we'll call you the 2021 project subcommittee then, make you official. Any questions about that project? Okay. I'm gonna move on and talk about uh, the designation subcommittee update. Um, and Patrick, uh, we had talked about um, the next step for the additional properties, if you want to just sort of introduce that. Sure. As I guess, Cambria and, and Daniel will, will remember. And I Robin, you might have been on the committee. We originally had a, a list of about 400 properties that was the inventory. It was combined inventories, including one done in 1999. And when we contracted with the Heritage Resources Center, their consultant, Marg Rao, put together two lists. The initial one of, I think, around 40 some, and then the second one of 150. But I noticed in in looking at them, they all begin with streets, they begin with the letter C. There are no A and B streets. And there may be some other ones. I know Marg said there were more that she hadn't yet looked at, but the sort of glaring part of it is all of the streets on Avon and Brunswick and Birmingham and Britannia and some other A and B streets aren't included. And on the 1999 list there were I didn't count them but I'd say 60 or 70 that had information that the, the our predecessor committee had done some research on them and that's what Margaret used to come up with the two lists she did so I guess I was wondering whether we should um, as the next step in this see about contracting with the heritage resources center to take a look at the 
last group of um, properties that were on the on the original list. And, and there may be others other than the, the A and B streets that, that I don't know. Do you, Daniel, do you remember why we skipped A and B streets? I don't remember, but I do remember that um, they were limited in terms of our budget and in terms of the geographical area that they were looking at. Um, they didn't, uh, they didn't sort of, I don't recall them going out, you know, down Water Street, Coburg Street, um, Brunswick Street, not nearly as much as they concentrated on streets closer to the core and in um, around St. David and um, Avon, Douglas, Norman, that area. Um, so I, I, I wonder if they just, they just didn't span out across the city as much as um, they would have liked to because of the budget. We do have money in the budget, the current budget this year to spend some money on this kind of project, I believe. I don't know if you have that at your fingertips, Casey. Yeah, but bear, yeah. bear with me, I'll look it up here in a second. Yeah, I do know we have money and I think this uh, stems from the fact that there was a building on Brunswick that was demolished and we got um, some inquiries um, as to why. And it was not on the non-designated list because it was it was had not been included in our survey. But uh, this is a long-term project, and I can't see why we wouldn't want to reach out to the center again and see if we can um, get Marge back and and see what we can fit into our existing budget for this year. We had five thousand dollars. Yeah, I thought so. So I, I'm not sure that Marg is actually still there. The last I heard, um, she had she had not returned to the Heritage Resource Center, um, and UW because of of COVID has been, uh, you know, somewhat shut down a little bit and uh, moved to online resources. So I'm not sure Marg is is at the Heritage Resource Center any longer. But we could reach out to the professor that. To oversees the Heritage Resource Center and he could probably advise. Yes, so um, yeah, hopefully we would be able to do this project um, and use these funds this year if things open up a little bit and you know people are allowed to sort of do some work in the community. Um, but I, I would like to reach out to them see what the availability is of a resource to continue the project and what we could do to um, spend the money um, on this. Because it is important. Uh, the non-designated list obviously um, is something that we've been working on for a number of years and slowly adding to it. And you can certainly you know, go to um, the website. We have a lot of information on what we've done. So if we can pick it up again as COVID recedes, um, and I'd, I'd, what I'd like to do is um, if we need a motion for this or if we just do some of the groundwork and come back for our next meeting and, and see what's available and then do a motion at that point to um, approve funds to, to pay for someone if they're available. Yes, I would wait and do that at the next yes. meeting. Yep. Any questions or, or thoughts on that? Um, just a question. Um, will you reach out to the professor or um, I dealt with Mark a little bit. But, um, I think Rachel did all of the initial discussions with the center. Rachel did do all the initial discussions. Um, I don't even know the, the professor's name. If, if I may, um, Alyssa did come from the region of Waterloo. I'm sure she has a number of contacts at the University of Waterloo, um, and she could probably reach out to find out who the um, current professor is it the last I heard I thought it was Mark Seasons but uh, maybe Alyssa you might know better. Uh, thanks Danielle I don't know offhand but that's certainly something I can look into and make that initial contact if that would be helpful. Um, 
and then uh, put him in touch or her in touch, whoever the individual might be with you, Cambria, to give a better sense of what it what the scope of work is that we're looking for. But I'm certainly happy to do that initial groundwork. That would be great. Yes, thank you. If you could, that would be excellent. Okay, and Howard, I think you had a question. Yeah. Uh, um, my comment is is more about uh, the budget um, question. Um, since we seem to have skipped over the uh, update on the heritage conservation standards, which you asked me to look at, and I actually did. So <laughs> I wanted to say that I reached out to uh, Thor Dingman, and um, he also suggested that Heritage Resources Center uh, might be able to help us in looking at updating um, our standards there. Uh, he also said that there were, um, you know, other, other communities' uh, plans were online. It seemed to me that this was something that uh, might also be a task, a kind of a preliminary task to actually revising Stratford's uh, heritage community designation, um, uh, or uh, sorry, the, the, the um, um, yeah, the, the conservation district standards um, to actually do the research of gathering together or looking at and assessing what are good standards in other communities. Um, I mean, one of Thor's fir first questions was, you know, are we looking for a professional advisor? And I think that's a fair, a fair question that we're not really looking for people to do free work for us. Uh, so um, if this is something that we deem uh, a priority then I just wanted to put that out because since there's limited funds, um, if it's not uh, a priority and I, 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 I'm sort of fully behind uh, working on the um, non-designated properties, but I just wanted to say that that's something else that's out there. Um, yeah, you are actually up next, so this is a great segue. Oh. <laughs> Um, but you raise a good point. We had, we had actually um, done some research or staff had done some research on getting a consultant who could rewrite our heritage standards, um, district standards. And there was a much higher price tag than we had funds for at that time. Um, you know, I, I'd heard between 35 and $70,000 to get it done. Mm -hmm. Um, but I think you raise a good point that the Heritage Resource Center may have um, some very good information um, to offer in terms of um, what's available out there, um, perhaps some best practices for us. Um, maybe they can find a resource who would potentially work on a volunteer basis. I'm not going to assume anything. Um, yeah. We do know that a professional consultant is something that's quite expensive and nothing that we thought that um, the city of Stratford were going to prioritize. Mm. Um, but I think that it's something that if we can get the right person um, to work with, we can add it to um, our conversation with the center and see what they can then suggest to us. Um, so we won't make any moves on the budget mm -hmm. or decisions until we have that information in hand. Okay. Yeah. It's a great project. Um, it's just that we seem to be drastically underfunded to get it done based on previous um, consultation. Mm -hmm. So. Okay. So thank you again, Alyssa. That would be great. Um, and Howard. Yes. You're next. <laughs> uh, um, um, I, I'm not sure what I'm supposed to say about this. Uh, I know that um, I just got a note uh, to confirm that the article that I submitted for to ACORN uh, has been accepted. So that's uh, some small movement in terms of uh, publicizing um, the historical value of, of, uh, of the Avoncrest property. Uh, that'll be part of the, the spring issue uh, devoted to healthcare uh, facilities across the province. Um, and I, I'm not sure what I'm supposed to be saying, but I mean, I, 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 
I've been working on a um, uh, proposal to designate, and I've done a lot of the research towards that. Um, and uh, I don't know that it's in a state yet to to circulate, or even if that's something that you would like, or people would like. Um, I think we were looking at um, putting forward that property for designation, or at least getting enough of the information to make an argument for it. Now, as we know, council is not necessarily interested in right. um, approving a designation application if the owner of a property is also not um, supportive of it. But uh, I think that um, we'd had the previous discussion that at least getting um, the information um, gathered together and, and making um, a proposal would at least show that we've we've done what we should do as a committee, which is making sure that um, buildings such as this are researched and we've put the legwork in and we've um, put forward that, that proposal for, for designation um, in acknowledgement of what the building um, really means to the community. And uh, congratulations on your article. Oh, thanks. Um, yeah. When it is released, please send yeah. Out so that we can all read it. Of course. Uh, yes, please. So if I if I send the draft version of what I have to to Casey to distribute to everybody, is that does that seem like the right way to go? I'm supportive of that. Okay. Sure, Howard, you can send it to me, Second. and I can send it out to everybody. Okay. Perfect. I'll do that. Excellent. Thank you. All right. Did everybody uh, have a chance to look at the development services report that was circulated by Casey? Yes. Yes. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, not a ton on this. Alyssa, did you have anything to, uh, to cover or you would like to add to the report? Um. Sure, I, if everyone's reviewed it, I won't go through a detailed overview of what's there. There's been a couple of things come through the building department. And then the planning item that we thought might be of interest is that there has been um, some proposed revisions to the plan of subdivision on Daly Avenue. Um, mm -hmm. So the details of what are being proposed are um, detailed in the development services report, but I'm certainly happy to answer or try to answer any questions you might have. Well, Patrick. Um, <clears throat> just a question. There was a public hearing on a Daly Avenue subdivision just about a year ago, I think. And in reading through the report, it, it appears this is a change to that revised subdivision. So the question is, will there be another public hearing on it? So at this point in time, we're not planning another formal public meeting on this application. So last year's public meeting um, was triggered because they were adding additional land to the draft plan of subdivision. At this point in time, they're just proposing some changes to the unit mix within that land that was considered through that previous public meeting. Um, so at this point in time, planning staff aren't proposing another formal public meeting based on the changes that are proposed. Any idea when it will um, go, I guess, to subcommittee or, or committee? Yeah, we're targeting March for taking it to um, Planning and Heritage Committee, um, but we're still, planning is still having some discussions with engineering staff on that. So that's kind of caveated with how quickly those discussions progress. Okay. Anyone else? I had a question and it's it's not included in the current report, but I wondered, Alyssa, if there is any information that could be shared um, about some of the, uh, the, pr the proposed development that's on Ontario Street. Um, I, of course, I'm blanking on the, uh, the addresses, but it's where the old restaurant is 
um, as you come into town. There's that lot and two adjacent lots. And uh, it's, uh, we haven't seen anything, but currently proposed um, as a, I think a four story residential. Um, any updates on where that's at? Sure, so you are correct. There's been an official plan amendment and a zone change um, amendment received. And I believe the municipal addresses are 370 to 396 Ontario Street. Um, so there was a public meeting held in early January uh, regarding the applications. Mm -hmm. There were a number of delegations received from the public and there's been a number of written comments received as well um, in response to the application. Mm -hmm. uh, so the um, applicant and the applicant's agent are going away and looking at the concept plan in response to some of those and will be making a resubmission um, at some point in time uh, to try to address some of the concerns that were raised through that public process. But you are correct, Cambria, it's a four story uh, residential building that's proposed and I think a total of 36 units are proposed in it. Is, does it have an adjacency to a designated building or a building on the non-designated list? Uh, it does not. It's within the heritage area in the official plan, but not within the conservation area or adjacency to a designated property. Okay. All right. So thank you. That caused um, a lot of commentary. Let's put it that way. So... Okay, thank you. Um, if there's nothing else or no other questions, I'll move on to uh, the new business. And um, I've already covered off the discussion of the subcommittees. Um, before we get to terms of reference, um, item C actually affects terms of reference. Um, in the terms of reference, there's a list of the delegates to this committee. Um, and we have SABA representatives on the committee with an alternative. There has been a suggestion that we might want to add somebody from the ACO, from the Architectural Conservancy of Ontario to this committee as well. They have visited our um, meetings before. They um, assist in some projects together and I just wanted to open the floor to see what um, thoughts might be on potentially adding another representative to the committee. It would change terms of references. That's why I'm bringing it up beforehand. Patrick, did, oh, Roger. Does the ACO have like a, a Perth County or a Stratford branch? Like, so would that representative be from this community? Yes, so it would be, thank you for that point, it would be the Stratford branch of the ACO. The ACO in Stratford um, is the group that does the ACO plaques, so those beige plaques that you see on a lot of buildings here. Um, they had also, they had suggested to us that we might want to uh, utilize the research that they'd put into those plaques for some of um, our designation and specifically non-designated list work. They have a lot of those plaques. And I think that would be quite a large project to sort of walk through what they've done, but they are an active group here in Stratford um, and it would be from the Stratford branch, yes. Basically, I think what she's getting at is the user interface. Sorry, Brian, I can't quite hear you. <laughs> Sorry, we've got three people doing different Zoom meetings here at my house tonight. So you're picking up some chatter from one of the other ones. Oh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> yeah, sorry about that. That's okay. <laughs> Um, I guess personally, I think it would would be an interesting addition to the committee. Um, we have a SABA representative who looks after the, the people doing the putting, but the ACO is, I guess, the, the branch of a larger provincial organization that deals with basically the same thing we do, heritage conservation in, in Stratford. And they might have some interesting perspectives. 
lead to some better opportunities to cooperate on things. Um, having said that, I don't know if they're interested mm -hmm. in being on the committee. Yes. No, I, they, they have talked to me before about okay. this or suggested it, or maybe just it falls under made noises. Mm. Um, yes. So they may or may, you're right, they may or may not they be interested. They are a volunteer organization. They are not people who work in heritage or uh, like Saba work within the community at that level. So it is another sort of volunteer group. Um, and yes, we may or may not um, have interest from their current membership to do this. Mm -hmm. I just thought it would be interesting to suggest and um, get input from this committee um, if we are interested. Would, would this be a member with voting status or would they be observers? Would they be also sitting on committees? Uh, it could be, I think, whatever we want to. Okay. So it could be a voting status, just like our Saba member is. Danielle? <laughs> Sorry, I was caught reading something else. Um, what was your question? Thoughts about adding potentially an ACO representative to be on Heritage Stratford? So I think it's it's up to the committee, honestly. I think sometimes cross-pollination between committees can be a good thing. Sometimes it's not because the, the cross-pollination for the member coming in um, that's representing a different body has a, has a different perspective and a different um, end goal or objective based on what their committee is, is looking for or looking at. And so sometimes those objectives don't cooperate and don't jive together. It depends on, on sometimes it depends on the member themselves, right? Sometimes they can separate the division between both committees and what their goals and objectives are, and sometimes they can't. So. I've seen it work with some committees. I've seen it not work with others. Yeah, all good points. Mm -hmm. The other option, oh, Roger. Uh, I think like, although I don't know a lot about really even both organizations, I think um, it's a good chance to get someone in the boat that's trying to row the same direction as what we're trying to achieve here. Assuming all the goals and everything lines up like that, but it, it is still a committee here. It's not like we're introducing um, a majority from, a, from ACO to this committee. Yes. True. True. Any other thoughts? Patrick? Just a procedural question, maybe probably for Danielle. Um, we probably need an amendment to the bylaw to have a, a designated member from another group, or is that something we can do? No, we would need to update the terms of reference and send it through council. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> So if that's what you'd like to do, then I think the first step will be um, to pass a motion requesting council add um, a representative from the ACO as a voting position to Heritage Stratford. And then it will it will go to them and it will be up to them to decide if one is added. I think before we do that, um, I'm, I'm going to reach out to uh, ACO first and see what they would be interested in doing it. I have spoken to them before, um, but uh, I will reach out to them and, you know, make the proposal that we are in favor of adding representation if they're interested in perceive, proceeding that way. And then we can come back and, and you know, to have a discussion again and then, and then go through the process, Casey. But before we do that, um, let's reach out to the group themselves. Mm -hmm. 
And I think that's what we did when we added the Saba alt alternate rep. We reached out to them to make sure that they had somebody that was interested and that they actually wanted to have an alternate. I think it was more Jacob that kind of brought it forward to begin with because he couldn't make all of the meetings. And so he wanted to have a backup position, but we did approach them to make sure that there was somebody interested and would fill that position before the terms of reference was updated. Yes. So we will we will proceed the same way on this issue um, and we'll, we'll see. And um, I can't assume what ACO will say, but they are folks who obviously share a lot of commonality in terms of their interest uh, in Stratford in heritage and history. So I will take that on. I know people um, on the ACO and I will follow up with this group when I hear back. All right, so given that then, um, the terms of reference were circulated to the group. Um, I hope everybody had a chance to read them. Uh, this I think would be the only update to them if we did in fact move forward on it. Yeah, most, most committees just have a look over their existing mandate if there's anything that they feel they wanna work towards differently. So Casey, just a question for you. If we were to increase our membership, so it would go up to 11 members, if we keep the um, Saba alternate rep, does that change quorum? So yes, so we're, yeah, the actual, the nine member that's at the top of page two should be 10, right? If the math is correct below. Um, yeah, so if it goes to 11, um, so we're 10, so that's six, so, uh, 11 would be five. It would still remain six. If it's a half, it remains at the whole. So if it's five and a, if it's six and a half, it's still six people for quorum. Patrick? So we have quorums noted as five members. So five would be for 10. If we move to 11, does it round up or down? Yes, yeah, so that quorum for five was based on the nine. So we're now 10 currently. Right. So and it's half to... plus one is six. So yeah. if we go to 11, mm -hmm. it's half, which is five and a half, which goes to six and a half, and it remains at six. It rounds mm -hmm. down, not up. Um, it, just to clarify, the Saba alternative isn't a voting member if the regular uh, member is here. Yeah, that's correct. So, we have, so they're only so one our, vote. Our quorum, our quorum is still five. Right. It's just You're right. two, either of two people can fill one slot. Mm -hmm. If we added somebody from the ACO, one alternative would be just to drop one of the citizen representatives down to six, and that would keep it in nine. If we went to 10, even numbers are not good for committees. No. No, they're not. I mean, an alternative could be to invite ACO to our meetings um, without a vote to get them yes. more involved and to maybe share some projects, for instance, you know, the projects that we're thinking of doing for this year with sort of modern heritage. Maybe ACO wants to to contribute to that as well. So I think that's, a, that's an option so that we're not changing um, sort of the math, if you like. Thank you for raising that, Danielle. Good point. All right. So I will still reach out to the ACO membership and, and see what their, their thoughts are. All right, is there any other business that I haven't covered off? Does anybody have anything? Only because this kind of relates to, to membership. We had talked at the last meeting about whether we needed another SABA or a SABA alternate because Eric's no longer available. And I can't remember what we were going to do about it, though. 
I know it came up. I can update on that. Um, I contacted Saba and pointed out that they had, they had the allowable room for an alternate, and they were going to canvas their members and see if they could find a volunteer for that. So because of ev everything's being kind of extended and delayed because of COVID, Zoom meetings and everything, so I guess is it might take them a month or two to figure out what they're doing, but currently it sounds as though they still want to have an alternate position. Okay. And I did actually get an email from our clerk today, and there has been someone come forward, and his application, I believe, is going to subcommittee in a couple of weeks, and then I believe council March 8th, which will be the day before our next meeting. So that person will most likely be appointed the day before, and I can let him know, and he'll be a voting member at that point if Jacob can't be here. Okay. Perfect. Well, that's good news. Okay. Roger? Yeah, I just wanted to bring up um, the point that I expressed to you and uh, Casey just about, so I guess it's more committees in general and sharing these people's personal information uh, to all the committee members. And I thought that maybe uh, we don't need everybody's personal information. We really just need uh, emails and potentially phone numbers. Yeah, thank you for remembering to bring that up, Roger. So uh, we circulated the information of who's on this committee and the subcommittees uh, I, last week. And um, we didn't check with people whether they wanted their personal information circulated. And so I'm not sure if there is a, any kind of published standard by the city on circulating personal information um, or whether there's something that needs to be updated. We've done it before in the format it was circulated, but um, I know it's become a hotter topic, I think, among people um, in terms of just having the personal address, emails, phone numbers out there in the world. Um, I think we're all a little bit more aware of that. So um, I was going to ask Casey and I can, even Danielle, who is here now, um, whether there were any sort of updates or published standards for that for committees. Um, and I apologize to Roger because I hadn't even thought of how it was being disseminated before. But, um, you know, um, if, you know, apologies to anybody else on the committee who was kind of put off by that. Um, but I don't know if there are any published standards for the, the city uses for committees um, in terms of sharing personal information. Um, Casey, I don't know if you know or Danielle knows. I don't know what the policy is for. It wasn't something that was published, like it's not, uh, wasn't sent out publicly and it's not something available um, to the public. And yes, I sent that out mainly for um, everyone to have a record of the subcommittees and I should have taken, deleted at the very least the addresses of everyone. Um, I know some people were looking together for, to get together for subcommittees with phone numbers as opposed to um, in, in emails. And I'm also not aware of any any sort of city policy related to sharing of committee members information. Um, certainly when it comes to council on your applications, then it's confidential and we don't share that that type of information. But as once you've been appointed to a committee, I, I'm not aware of any policy that says you can't share that information. Well, I think this committee going forward <laughs> will we'll make a note of that um, and then ask people's permissions for what they want shared and not shared. So thanks for raising that, Roger. Yep. All right. Anything else? I'm looking at everybody's faces, <laughs> your window panes. All right. The only thing I'm going to add has nothing to do with heritage. Danielle, I love your heart in the window. Yeah. <laughs> we can see it. I there. actually have, I have two of them. I have, I'm upstairs in our loft in our second.
second story loft and then I have one down on our our front window overlooking our porch they're the the ones from Moss LED and um, Mississauga to support local businesses so yeah we ha I have two of them that's awesome they're great yes I've been thinking of getting one I'm sure Moss LED is backlogged now which is great so anyway they actually stopped making orders so yeah oh, yeah uh, now do those uh, run counter to the city's uh, sign bylaws <laughs> in fact robin i can tell you they meet all of the illumination policies and, and bylaw regulations <laughs> oh very good <laughs> yes if an application comes through we're going to approve it <laughs> right okay so our next meeting is tuesday march 9th um and uh, I will do a couple of things before then. I, I'll probably be sending some emails out to you folks around if I can get in touch with the ACO before then. But um, otherwise, I, unless there's anything else, looking for a motion to adjourn. Howard and Robin. Perfect. Okay.